Okay. Moving along in our coursework here, we've, we've come to uh, chapter 15 in Sulkind, which is uh, about linear regressions. And um, some people like linear regressions, other people don't like linear regressions. <clears throat> I think linear, linear regressions are pretty darn cool. And why do I say that? Uh, because uh, besides predicting who will win the Super Bowl or the World Series or the golf tournament or whatever, uh, um, it can help you kind of uh, determine how well clients will do uh, uh, <clears throat> based on uh, their scores at one time, how well will they do at another time. So. <clears throat> You can you we linear regression is used all the time in education. Uh, you've all taken a um, SAT test. Um, what's the other one? There's SATs, ACTs, GREs, etc., etc., LSATs. All those kind of scores have a certain predictive value. It's like they predict how well you will do uh, in uh, a certain program. So, for example, we don't require a GRE here at UMKC School of Social Work, but if we did, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, once we have a few people going through the the uh, program, we can start to predict how well somebody's going to do based on what their GRE score is. Uh, now, it's not the you know the the the, the all and end all. But it is one piece of information. So, okay. So, what is prediction? We're going to learn about the intercept and slope functions in Excel, and so I'm going to kind of chew my way through those. So they're kind of these little detailed steps that uh, we all just love to do, of course. And then I'm going to try to show you, if I have enough time, how to do it using a different program called R. <clears throat> Prediction, um, okay, we've moved away from, from uh, 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 using the measures of central tendency. We haven't completely abandoned it, of course, because it's kind of central to all statistics. But we've started thinking about correlations, you know, how closely related are things, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and a regression is simply a, a correlation um, uh, related um, statistical test. So, um, so when we have data that is collected at at two separate times, uh, <clears throat> and we can pair those. So we know how well you know Bob Pru did on 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 his uh, GRE, and we know how well he did in his um, PhD program. Uh, <clears throat> we can we can do uh, correlation, uh, and when we know all my cohorts and all the other people who've done that program, we can start to predict how well we did in our um, you know. How well, how well can we predict um, um, uh, how the typical person will do um, uh, uh, when all we know is their GRE? Um, <clears throat> so, Salkine has an example in the book that we'll go through, uh, and <clears throat> and it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's predicting college GPA from high school GPA. And you know, a lot of us would think, well, that's really a no-brainer. You know, people who who um, who uh, have higher GPAs in in um, uh, high school tend to have the higher GPAs in um, college, and uh, we know that from our common sense. If, if we happen to have common sense, uh, hey, where did my pencil go? So here's my pen of. This GPA, and then we got a 3.3. .3. Uh, 
uh, this 1.9 person here, even though they did a little better in college uh, with a 2.0, uh, <clears throat> they still didn't do as well as that person with a th with a 3.5. So, um, and even though the person with a 3.5 got a 3.3, the 3.3 got a 3.7 in college. Um, yeah, this is the way it goes. Uh, there's a little bit of trend though that I think we can see, and. Uh, um, and <clears throat> these um, um, these particular examples where, where, where we get the lowest score, the 1.9, uh, going up, and the highest score, 3.8, oh, actually 4.0, going down, 3.8 .8 goes down as, as well. 3.5, another high score, goes down. 3.7, another high score, goes down. 3.2, goes down. So, <clears throat> uh, whereas the lower scores, uh, with the exception of, of, of this 2.7, tend to go up. That's, that's, that's um, uh, in statistics parlance, that's called a regression towards the mean. So, so uh, and, and particularly with this with this 4.0, we would expect them to not get a 4.0. They could get a 4.0, of course, but most likely they're not going to because they've only got one direction to go, and that's down. So, so <clears throat> that's why when I was in high school, I started at the, at the bottom with a 0 0.92 GPA. That's what I got in high school. I was not um, I was not uh, engaged. So, anyway, so that's prediction. Um, so, uh, what we will we will do in Excel is to create a scatter plot of of um, <clears throat> the um, um, scatter plot of a um, uh, of, of these two measures. There we go, and we're, we'll. We'll put a regression line in there, and and then we will uh, <clears throat> talk about how to predict from that regression line. And here uh, is uh, a good graphic to demonstrate the 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 simple theory behind regressions. So, for every unit of x, whatever that unit is, so this this, this time it's 0.5. Uh, unit Y will increase whatever that amount is. So, uh, <clears throat> but we have to find a place on the chart where these two actually meet. We can we can see that um, they don't meet at 2.0. 2.0 and 2.0 don't meet. Uh, so we know we don't have a, a perfect correlation or a perfect uh, trend line. So, uh, as we and, and we can we can pick anywhere on this line. For some reason, uh, uh, Salkine picked 3.0, but we can we can pick 2.5. Come up over here, and then come over here. If I could draw straight, I, could, I would do that. Uh, <clears throat> or you you can pick a um, you know measure way over here, um, and do it that way. So. Uh, <clears throat> So, in um, um, you know, of course, prediction is is rarely perfect. Each individual's uh, will deviate in some amount from their predicted uh, amount. Okay, I don't know that you're really interested in uh, uh, learning the formula, but th but the th things that we we need to remember is that the y variable, and the y is always the one that stands up, uh, is the one on the left, <clears throat> is the dependent variable. It's the, it's the thing that we're trying to predict. The x variable is the independent variable, the score being used as the predictor. So that would be um, uh, high school GPA in this example, GRE in the, in the example that I gave earlier. So, 
and then um, uh, we need to calculate two things, the slope and the intercept. And we can do that using both um, um, Macintosh and Windows versions of Excel. So there's the formula. Ah, we'll move right past it. Uh, the standard error of the estimate is the measure of how much each data point on average, the, the, we're going back to the mean, differs from the predicted data point or a standard deviation of all the error scores. So uh, the higher the correlation between two variables, um, the lower the error, error will be. Uh, we can do multiple regressions. Uh, and um, um, we're not going to get into that. Uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> one of the kind of the rules of thumb of, of doing um, regressions is that you need to run your correlations first to, to make sure that, that your um, um, depend, independent variables are related to your dependent variables and that they should have something in common. Um, but uh, the independent variables should not be related to one another. So a good example of, of that would be, uh, say, your uh, dependent variable is, is uh, health. So you've got a health measure, whatever that is. Um, and your independent variable, um, no, let, let's, do some, let's do weight since um, I need to go on a diet yet again. Uh, lose a couple pounds, get into my summer uh, physique. Um, but um, so my dependent variable, my outcome variable, uh, the thing that I'm predicting is my weight. So my weight in pounds it will be the Y variable. So that'll be the scale that goes on the left, uh, up and down. Uh, the independent variables uh, could be things like how many cookies I eat, number of cookies eaten per day. That's a great independent variable. It's a predictor of, of, um, of, um, <clears throat> of um, my weight. Um, uh, exercise could be another one. Um, so... Uh, <clears throat> Another one could be cupcakes. So, so we would need to run a correlation on all the, the uh, predictor variables, all the independent variables to see if, the, if they are somehow related. You know, I may find that you know, as I increase my exercise, I increase my intake of cookies or cupcakes or whatever it is I, I'm, I'm measuring here. And so I have to, I have to, to make sure that uh, uh, I'm not, you know, uh, predicting that using two common variables to um, predict um, uh, one thing. So, um, uh, classic example is is smoking and drinking. They often uh, they're both uh, have negative health effects, and they uh, are often correlated one with the other. So. Uh, you have to think, you know, about what your what your data is. So, uh, so a prediction is a case of simple correlations and a very powerful tool for examining complex relationships. So, uh, this card. So I went through that really quick because I wanted to show you some stuff in Excel and how to do that. And, um, and how to do it is is pretty simple. Um, uh, <coughs> And um, the two things that we need to figure out in, um, in Excel are the slope and the intercept. And um, 
and it's as simple as okay. Let's put a, let's put them down here. Slope, slope, and intercept. Give me some space here. So our slope value is as simple as coming up here to our function button, and you people who have Macintosh computers know like that. And of course, then you got to find slope, and it's as simple as going slope. There it is, right there. Click OK, and then you get the little dialog box. So you got slope and intercept. Um, the y variable, remember that's the one that stands up is the dependent variable or the variable being predicted. So uh, we're trying to predict how well someone's going to do in college. So that's the y variable and the only other variable is our high school variable and that's the one that runs horizontally. So we click OK. We got 7.039 and a whole bunch of uh, more letters. Intercept, you know, they, they couldn't make this easy easier for us. It's just the same. Don't have to do the function. Um, you can do intercept. And do that. And you, you see down here in the bottom, it says your known y's and your known x's. Remember that our y's was, was uh, college. We, we put the comma in. We, we know, remember that our x's is the, is the horizontal one. Uh, and so you don't have to go up here to the function bar, but you certainly can if you like that, that little user interface. So we get our, um, our um, slope and our intercept. And from there, we can uh, predict a... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Um, um, how well somebody is going to do. And so, um, uh, so for example, if, if we have um, a um, student sitting in front of us who's asking you the question, well, school social worker, you know, how well do you think I'm going to do in, in uh, college? And, and of course, you know, you're going to, if you're seeing them as your school social worker, you're going to talk to them about things they can do. But the only piece of information that you can really do is, is predict it based on how well past students have done. So, so you say, well, what's your current GPA? And they say, in this example, uh, they got 3.25. And so in order to figure that out, it's a very simple formula of just simply adding together, multiplying, actually, the <clears throat> value of the slope with the summed value of the intercept and the person's actual score. So, and all you have to do in this bad boy is just click on that one. That gives you your slope value. And then you put in your star, star which is your universal worldwide uh, symbol for multiplying in Excel. And then you need to know your actual score, which is this one right over here. And then you add that with your intercept. Hit enter. Boom. You can say, well... Now you'll probably get a, uh, a bare B, so you know you'll do okay. You'll do well enough to get through that first year, but you still need to work hard in college. So, uh, so that's that couldn't be simpler. Um, now doing doing um, um, doing a chart in Excel. Where's my chart, 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 charts? So we start with a scatter plot. Simple, very, very simple scatter plot. And what's these numbers on my scatter plot? I didn't expect numbers to be there. 
What did I have? What did I? Oh, I, I already had that chosen. So let me get you out of the way. Let me cut you and start over. Sorry. I'll go back and try this again. Insert my little scatter plot. I've got nothing in it. Right click, select my data. Um, okay, my data, my data ranges are this right here. We we'll click OK, and, and as um, as often happens, does Excel put it in right or does it put it in wrong? Um, Let me um, select my data again. Uh, my horizontal categories are three point five, three point two five, four, three point eight, two point eight. So one time in Excel's distinguished career does it actually do it right. So it's got my college by my my um, um, college by high school. So we could change it a little bit to get ourselves some some labels, uh, you know. So we could we could change our label down here and and notice what happened. It put my line in there, just like boom, just like that. So let me format my trend line and see what it does. Um, uh, if I display the equation, um, it gives me my intercept up here. Uh, so it's a wonderful thing. Um, <clears throat> so I can put my titles in and I can, I can go to the bank with it. For those of you who have Excel, on Microsoft Windows, uh, the data analysis tool pack does have a regression analysis in here, and you can just simply um, do it the same way where your college is uh, the y axis, your high school is um, the x axis. In fact, let me just change this to uh, the way you need to think about it before. And then after. So this is these are really before and after scores. Um, so that's still selected. I've got labels. Uh, do I need a confidence level? No, I don't need a confidence level. My output range, I can put it right over here. And um, and I'll just do some normal plots and get put some line plots. Click OK. That was pretty quick. Um, so I darn it, grabbed the wrong place. So here, here's my uh, here's my plots, um, and there's the fit line. It's not as uh, it's not as pretty as the other one, but it you know it's there. It gives you the information. You can you can treat it just like you did your other um, one and and format it like that. And you can come down here and you can format your your um, uh, x-axis. Where's my x-axis? Come on, x-axis. Format major grid lines. Um, oh, the thing I hate about Excel is that it doesn't follow my directions. So we can we can find our start stop. We don't need to have a five in there because we know it doesn't go to five. So. Let's go ahead and, and do our access op options. The maximum, let's just do four. The minimum, nobody did zero. Let's do 1.5. Uh, 1.75 as a matter of fact. Um, and then click OK. Come over here. Do the same thing on our other axis, format axis. Uh, we'll come to a four and our top range is the B 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 
we'll go four. Yeah, we'll just stick it at four because four really is as far as it goes. And so, so there we have it. Uh, if we want to give a little bit more range over here so that we can actually see all the data, we'll just um, format it again and change that up to 4.25. So that's going to show all of our data. Uh, I don't like the way it's uh, the range of it. Major, root, major unit is... Uh, 0.5. Let's do 0.5. Let's try this again. It didn't want to do it. Come on, there we go. So let's let's start this instead at 1.5, and that will make it a little bit. Um, and we can go 4.25, major axis is at 5. And so that gets our nice little line on here. Uh, and again, we can display our, our um, uh, equation, which will give us our intercept right there on the chart. So um, we also get some, 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 some data that uh, Salkind doesn't really go into talking about uh, uh, um, evaluating. Uh, but you can see that you get you get um, t statistics and, and probability values just like you you did uh, before. So um, uh, you know our probability is kind of outside of our range on the intercept. Uh, uh, the before and after the before probability t statistic. Um, <clears throat> uh, Oh, we, we, we do have a significant, um, uh, the significance of an F and then our F score. It's kind of like the T values and T criticals, or F values and F criticals. So it um, gives a nice little, uh, little uh, chart here of, you know, observation one, two, three, four, five, etc. Um, <clears throat> um, and you know, it 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 predicts how everyone would have done, and uh, uh, so we can see that number one did a little better than was predicted. Number two did less than predicted. Three did less than predicted. Four did less predicted. Five did a little better. Six did less, and and so on. So. And again, kind of, we can go go back and match them up. The higher ones tended to go down a little bit. The lower ones tended to come up a little bit. That's called regression to the mean. Uh, it's kind of a standard um, uh, statistical concept. So uh, <clears throat> let's um, quickly. How, how long have we been around? We're around for twenty-eight minutes. Can I do a regression line in twenty-eight minutes? So um, <clears throat> I can. So. Um, This is uh, the interface of the R uh, uh, statistical program, and this is the the um, what is this called? Graphic user interface for the same program. And uh, so let me. I wish this was bigger, but it's not. So anyway, so I previously loaded this in into the uh, into the data set. So uh, as high school and college, or HS and college. So um, there are several ways that one can get at doing uh, linear regressions in um, uh, R. So um, let me go ahead and oh, let me change these names. High school and college. Here's one simple way to get your data into R. Cut and paste. Copy and then go back over here to your R program and then import data from clipboard and we'll just call it GPA again. Override our data. 
So it's on the clipboard. We're using white space. There's no commas or tabs or other separator values. Periods are our decimal point character. Gives us a warning. Just don't do this. You're going to overwrite your data. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> so there's my data. Um, um, first thing I can do is come down and find a, a linear regression or a linear model. And uh, um, <clears throat> so my explanatory variable is the uh, how well somebody does on their GPA in high school. And the response uh, is the college. So again, this is independent, dependent. Click OK. And there I get my model. And uh, um, really nice. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, graph it out for us. So uh, what we want to use in our graph is is, is they do it just a, a nice little uh, scatter plot one that will give you your <coughs> uh, line for you. So. Uh, let me see which line do I want to get rid of. So my x variable, remember that is the the uh, one that runs horizontally. The dependent variable, the y variable, is the independent variable. Y becomes before x, uh, not after x. I mean, excuse me. Uh, see. These, this thing called marginal box plots puts a, a margin out in the corner that shows where the where the means is. This is kind of cool to have. Um, we can adjust the size of our text. A couple of nice little things over here. Uh, and let's see. Let's get rid of our least squares line. Let's just draw a, a smooth line and um, see what that looks like. Oh, I got rid of the wrong line. So let's go back and try that again. Scatter plot, same thing. So I want the least squares line. I don't want. I, I don't. I don't want to show the spread. That's what I don't want to do. Where did my? Where did it go? Where did it go? So, so there's there's my line. So yeah, I still leave them like that one. So. Let's try it one more time. Uh, scatter plot. Um, click OK. And look at it this time. So there's my simple little, little regression line there. So done in R. Happened really quick. Uh, this is all customizable. Um, uh, I'll be talking more about R later on. So.